Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Explore Together Science Challenge. My name is Barry Kogan, and I work with the WARM program at Wave Hill. Our students research urban environmental issues, and we focus on mapping and ecological restoration. For this week's challenge, we will explore the relationship between urban heat island effect and New York City's natural areas. Collaboration is an important part of the environmental field. Everything is just so interconnected and complex problems requires expertise from different fields. I'm joined by two of my colleagues from the Natural Areas Conservancy and the Urban Field Station, and they will elaborate on what urban heat island effect is, how and why it's a public health issue, and the connection to New York City's over 10,000 acres of natural areas. Hi, I'm Lauren Smosmonte, a data analyst with the Cool Neighborhoods NYC Initiative. And today I will talk to you a little bit about the urban heat island effect. Simply, the urban heat island effect is when the urban temperature is larger than the rural temperature. And this is measured by the urban heat island intensity. This intensity varies throughout the day depending on daily weather conditions. However, the largest difference between the urban and rural environments occurs from the afternoon through the night period. These differences can be measured at the surface using surface temperature or in the air using air temperature. So why do we have these temperature differences? It must be no surprise to you that the urban and rural environment look different. Rural areas have more vegetation and pervious surfaces that cool off faster at night, whereas the city has more impervious surfaces, taller buildings, and less vegetation, which causes the city to cool off more slowly after sunset. Within the five boroughs of New York City, we experience different urban heat island intensity depending on which neighborhood we live. This graph shows the surface temperature in New York City. As you can see, there are areas with high surface temperatures and areas with low surface temperatures. But you can imagine areas near a park or with more vegetation having lower surface temperature, leading to smaller urban heat island intensities. After listening to all these scientific terms, you must be saying to yourself, but why should I care? This is all very interesting. We have hot weather all the time, and I can tolerate one to two heat waves a year. The simple answer is, urban heat islands can exacerbate the impact of heat waves and extreme events in the summer. In addition to this, climate change projections predict that heat waves will be longer and more frequent in the future. The nighttime, when the urban heat island intensity is at its highest, presents the most dangerous time for people because during a heat wave, it does not allow time for people's bodies to recover from the high daytime heat. Every summer in New York City, on average, there are 450 related emergency department visits and approximately 100 deaths associated with hot weather and every one of these deaths could be prevented. Simply put, extreme heat tends to exacerbate other health conditions. Of all the types of extreme weather, the chance of extreme heat or heat wave occurring in New York City every year is nearly 100%. This makes it a very important issue. So now that you have learned of its importance, what is New York City doing and what can you do to help? New York City has designed a comprehensive heat plan termed the Cool Neighborhoods NYC Initiative. Not only are we studying ways to reduce the urban heat island intensity, we are implementing these strategies in neighborhoods at most risks. For more information, you can check out the Cool Neighborhoods NYC report. Local agencies like the Parks Department and Department of Environmental Protection also have opportunities throughout the year to participate in climate change activities. And lastly, you can check out the NYC Climate Twitter page or Instagram page uh, to keep up to date on health alerts and programs. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Hoke. I'm the Project Manager of Ecological Monitoring and Assessment with the Natural Areas Conservancy. And I'm here to tell you about the role of vegetation in urban heat mitigation. 
In New York City, we have about 5.2 million trees on public and private property, and 24% of land in New York City is covered by tree canopy. 25% of that is composed of street tree canopy, and we have about 10,500 acres of forested natural areas in the city. For reference, Manhattan is about 15,000 acres, so the amount of forested natural areas that we have is about two-thirds the area of Manhattan. The Natural Areas Conservancy and the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation work to create the New York City Nature Map, which uh, details the amount of forests, streams, freshwater wetlands, and salt marshes across the city. You can look at the amount of each of these resources at a bunch of di different geographies. So in addition to looking at these citywide, you can look at things by borough, by council district, and by any park with any amount of natural areas. To look at the distribution of street trees across the city, you can visit New York City Park's street tree map, which has the species and size of each tree um, planted on our city's street. Knowing the amount and distribution of vegetation across the city is important in understanding urban heat mitigation. As Lauren mentioned, vegetation plays a crucial role in mitigating the urban heat island effect because the more vegetation you have in an area, the faster it can cool off at night. And I'm sure many of us have recognized how we can cool off when we walk under a tree to get some shade or when we visit one of the forests in New York City. Here I am in Forest Park, Queens. And, um, and that being said, uh, urban forests and dense vegetation can be more effective in cooling areas because there's more vegetation and it can cool down the area faster. However, street trees are also really important because they can provide shade to buildings and, um, and can cool us down when we're going for a walk down the street. Just like us, plants are also living things and they too are affected by urban heat. We're working to make sure that the species we plant can tolerate and bounce back from heat stress and other climate change impacts. If you want to get involved, you can check out the Natural Areas Conservancy website or the New York City Park Stewardship page and get, in, get involved in tree planting events that are happening in the fall and the spring. Or you can also help by making sure that the ecosystems are healthy to make sure that the, the trees and other plants um, that we plant can thrive. Thank you. GIS is a type of software that allows us to make complex map-based models of an area. It is especially useful in understanding a geographic or spatial issue like urban heat island effect. The software allows us to break down the phenomenon into different layers and explore how they are all related. For example, this is a layer that shows New York City's forested areas. This is one that shows cooling locations like playground sprinklers or officially open fire hydrants. Lastly, this is one that shows demographic information for each neighborhood. Remember, like many public health issues, urban heat island effect impacts vulnerable populations most. And this brings us to our challenge. With the help of our students, we created this interactive map for you to explore. The challenge has two parts. First, you're gonna explore this map in search of different information about how urban heat island effect impacts your neighborhood you will make comparisons with the rest of New York City. For the second part of the challenge, you will make a prediction about the impact New York City natural areas have in mitigating urban heat island effects. For more instructions, please refer to the worksheet and the instructions written on the map. Lastly, I want to invite you to learn more with us this Friday at 2.30 p.m. As part of this project, our students are collecting temperature data in their neighborhoods this week. We will share some of the preliminary results of their data, and you will get to see if your prediction was correct. We will also be joined by a panel of researchers and experts who have been dealing with urban heat island effects. You can ask them questions, learn more about what the city is doing to mitigate the impacts, and also learn about potential careers you might one day pursue. Looking forward to seeing you there.